hey guys what's up so this video is particularly for my course students and i'm actually just posting this video because in my previous live stream i have been getting a lot of questions about my course why should anyone take the course and what exactly is the value compared to some of the videos that i'm putting on youtube and stuff along those lines so i just thought like i may actually show you one of the exercises that i'm basically giving my students uh, with regards to variables and prototypings so now coming to my students so students are course enrollments. What we've covered in the previous module or in this whole module is understanding variables, how to use them in prototyping, why to use them, when to use them, and all of that detail, and obviously different ways in which you can interact with variables using prototyping. Now I actually want you to do an exercise. And I don't want anyone to actually skip this exercise. If they wanna skip it, they'll be hitting themselves in the foot because if you don't practice, you're not gonna get better. Okay, so now what I exactly want you to do can be screen uh, can be seen in this exercise file. I've actually shared a link to this exercise file in my course as well, so you can have a look at it. When you come to this exercise file, you don't need to ask for edit access. Don't ask ask about like edit access in this file because if a single person starts messing with this file, then it's going to mess it up for other people as well. Once you have access, just click on the drop down and duplicate the file. You don't need edit, edit access. Okay, so this is the application. It's let's say a furniture store application. Uh, pretty basic application, you just have five screens. Actually, this screen is useless, but I'm gonna tell you what you need to do in this particular exercise. So once you click Start Explore, you basically have a bunch of products and you just need to interact with these three products in this particular exercise. What I want you to do is, if a person clicks on Add to Cart on any of these products, on this one, on this one, or the first one, then this should change. So I've already created the components for you. So for example, there's a toggle here on the component level itself, and that's gonna change to something like this. So anytime a person clicks on add to cart, it's gonna change to something like this, and you can increment it or you can decrease it. If it goes below one, then obviously it's gonna again toggle this particular button, and it's not gonna show the plus or minus. And that needs to happen separately for all of these all of these three items it needs to happen separately it also needs to happen at this inner level so at this inner level we basically have something like this where we have the add to cart button similarly here in this particular add to cart button you can see that there's a toggle here that's going to convert this add to cart button to something like this and if you click plus or click minus that's just going to bump up the cost uh, bump up the quantity and stuff along those lines so you need to do this in all of the cards all of the product cards and in the inner page for one of the uh, products as well. Now, once you actually do that, and once you're doing that, there's a count on the cart itself. So I'm gonna go here and I can show this badge as well. So this badge and the count on this badge needs to update with the total of the number of each product that you're adding. So imagine if you add like two of these products and one of this and one of the other one, the count is gonna be, let's say four. And this is actually going to be totaling here. So that is something that you need to do. After you've done all of that, if you click on the cart, you're gonna see something like this with each item and its quantity exactly being displayed. Not only just that, you're also gonna see the unit price per unit price. And if this particular item has, let's say two units, then this price is going to be multiplied by two. Similarly for each and every single one of them. Additionally, all of these items, like for example, I currently just have these three items. So it says three items in total, but Otherwise, if we had, let's say five items, like one of this, one of this, and three of this, this is gonna say five items. The total cost is also going to be added, combining all of the number of items and their respective prices. Then you're also gonna have a sales tax that's gonna be 15% of the subtotal, and you're gonna have a total that's gonna be adding these two things up. So again, this may, be, may seem a bit complicated, but I want you to do this because this is gonna help you practice and master variables. This may be a bit laborious, but again, you're gonna juggle to play with a bunch of variables and changing them on the fly and making sure your construction of variables and your uh, schema is actually really good. And you're gonna obviously distribute them in collections and groups, similar to what we've talked about in some of the previous exercises. Now, in this particular checkout page, if you went ahead and let's say decreased one item, for example, if I change this from one to zero here, it's gonna disappear from the checkout page. All of these things should be done with variables. So it's gonna disappear from the checkout page. If we reduce this, it's gonna disappear as well. If we reduce this, it's gonna disappear as well. And if there are no items, completely no items, then this particular box is also gonna disappear because you can't really check out, you don't have any items. And this content that you see here is actually going to be shown here. The reason why we're not gonna have two separate cart pages is the fact that anyone can come on the cart page and remove all of the items. So we need this particular thing, this illustration, 
or it's actually a lottie animation and then some text here instead of this and anytime a person goes ahead and adds certain items then obviously we're going to show those items in the card so those are some top level things in terms of variables that you need to do let me see if i missed something so convert add to and all of these things the things to do are actually written here so add convert add to card buttons on click which i mentioned card badge on cart icon in the footer that's something i mentioned as well that needs to keep on updating checkout page updates checkout page should be updated to show the cart items count for each item should be unique um, so again as you can see here maybe i forgot to mention this particular count that's there obviously this needs to be updated as well so i don't want to spell out exactly how you're going to do it you need to obviously i think this is pretty simple based on the uh, the the previous videos that I basically explained you and I've defined how to do certain things and how to update counts and stuff along those lines. So hopefully this is going to be actually helpful uh, in creating this exercise. And if there are no items in card, the same card page should be updated. So again, most of the stuff that I've just mentioned is actually here. Theme this whole app. Okay. So currently, as you can see, we just have these four or five variables and these are being used in this design. Um, so and there may be some variables that are disconnected so definitely you need to connect them as well and you need to convert all of these themes or all of these styles into variables and link it to the whole application once you've done that you also need to add a dark theme and that's going to basically allow us to change these whole pages in one tap to a dark mode and that's something you need to do one pointer or disclaimer that, I, that i'd just like to add instead of going ahead to the screens directly and changing them first try to actually change some of the components that are here and link these components to variables so linking variables to or to the components is a must if you do that then obviously you won't have to do the repetitive tasks of updating each product item separately and if you want to update as we've mentioned already in the previous module exercises but i'm just adding this for my youtube subscribers as well you don't have to go and click on individual items to update them as we can see we have a bunch of colors once we have variables or these styles and colors converted to variables i can just go here and i can update it so any particular thing in this whole selection that's using the dark color is now going to be using the dark variable so no need to actually go to each individual item and do that okay once you have that done now as you can see this particular application this does, does not have any animations so in the prototyping module uh, or mastering prototyping module i basically explain to you how to do really realistic animations and stuff along those lines and transitions between screens mobile screens etc etc so you need to do that here as well so from the home page how should this particular page appear if i click on let's say an inner product page it should scroll from the bottom up and stuff along those lines if i click on this x it should go down without duplicating the screens you don't have to duplicate them you're not going to do smart animates here you're not going to do the stupid stuff about like smart animates where we try to copy all of these things and place them here and then on a click it's animating and stuff along those lines i don't want you to do all of that duplicated effort do it in the way that i mentioned it to reduce effort and reduce duplication similarly obviously on the cart page like how does this happen uh, if i remove these items do we have a transition here and stuff along those lines so think about those things and yeah even if you don't do that like perfectly this particular exercise is more about variables and prototyping but ideally try to do something try to make this application a bit fancier and a bit more realistic so that's going to be pretty much it for those who actually are interested in taking the course uh, check out the link in the descriptions or in the top comments uh, obviously most of my subscribers have a 50% off right now on the course so if you're interested in bumping up your figma game in general and then now with obviously config 2023 we have a lot of additional powerful features that you may definitely need help with so if you want to actually go ahead engage with us participate in these exercises talk to me in my discord community and my team definitely do take that course and i'll see you all later take care bye